Well, good afternoon, everybody. My job in life is uh, to accompany people in the precipice and the depth of despair and also in the heights of happiness because my work is uh, psychotherapy and my specialty is the inner world so I will be saying quite a few things about the inner world uh, this afternoon because I believe that the inner world of our experience uh, holds a lot of resources and these resources are there for free almost free or completely free and they're just as important as uh, my opinion as uh, oil and uh, uranium and uh, uh, all kinds of energies and so on and so on but before I go into uh, my main subject I would like to tell you a story which uh, uh, more or less will outline the kind of basis that I start with and the story is a Jewish story. Uh, it's about uh, Abraham. Abraham was given a great privilege, according to the story, to travel back in time and witness uh, the creation of uh, uh, the universe. So he uh, was with God, and uh, God uh, starts creating... Uh, the stars and the planets uh, and, uh, and uh, the galaxies and uh, after that God looks at what he has created and he says it is good. Then God uh, creates the earth and the mountains and the lakes and the rivers and the seas and then he looks at what he has done and he says it is good. And then God uh, creates uh, the animals, all the animals from the smallest to the largest, and uh, he looks at what he has done, and again, he says, uh, it is good. And uh, finally, we come to the climax of creation, and uh, God uh, creates uh, man and woman. But he remains silent. And uh, Abram says, why didn't you say it is good? And God says, well, it may be good, but it may also be bad. It's up to you. Your destiny is open. We don't know yet what you're going to do with it. And to me, this story of uh, having an open image of what a human being is, uh, in some way depicts what has happened uh, in the history of, of ideas in the past uh, 100 or 150 years uh, history. Because uh, we have been going from an image of a human being that was inherently selfish and uh, aggressive. Homo homini lupus. Uh, human beings are wolves to each other. Of course, we discovered that wolves are not so bad after all. And uh, nor maybe are human beings. Indeed, uh, uh, what I think has been found out in uh, so many different kinds of researches in the past uh, uh, decades is that uh, Human beings are maybe indeed uh, be cruel and aggressive and selfish, but they could also be um, altruistic, generous, caring, and empathic. I wrote a book a few years ago called uh, On Kindness, and uh, I uh, uh, talked about 18 different ingredients of kindness because I don't see kindness as a form of uh, courtesy. I see it uh, rather as uh, a composite, a cluster of many different behaviors and attitudes such as uh, 
caring, warmth, gratitude, joy, trust. And uh, uh, there are so many researches that uh, point to this fact. The researches on uh, all kinds of things, on uh, uh, immunology and uh, animal behavior and uh, the behavior of children at school and uh, volunteer work and um, all kinds of uh, different fields. And I would just like to uh, mention two or three or four different researches. Among the most um, recent, the, um, you may not immediately see the connection of, uh, but I think you will, between these researches and the enlarged idea of kindness. Uh, one research was on uh, smiles. They, uh, this was done in America, they went and looked at uh, uh, the smiles on pictures of uh, footballers in the, uh, at the beginning of uh, last century. I think it was in the 20s. All these footballers in American colleges were smiling. Most of them were smiling. Now the researchers cataloged the smiles. Large, very big smile, medium, small, and uh, no smile. Then they looked into the lives of these people. Of course, uh, uh, this was a long time ago, so they were all dead, I believe, by the time of the research was done. And uh, what they found was that uh, uh, the life of these people, the duration of the life of these people, was directly correlated with the, how big a smile uh, the people had. Big smile, long life. Small uh, smile, shorter life. No smile, we are getting in trouble. <laughs> and of course, smile, uh, you can see how uh, much more than frowning is connected to kindness. When we're kind... Smiles here. Excuse me? You can see how smiles are connected to kindness. And uh, I uh, want to mention another. Uh, this is um, uh, quite recent research that was done. This was done on rats. Of course, what you can see in the rats does not necessarily um, connect with human beings. But uh, we are all mammals, and uh, we can understand a lot of ourselves by looking at animal behavior. What uh, was done was to uh, uh, have one rat under a, a glass bowl. And uh, then there was another rat that was free instead. And there was a little door that uh, could be opened from the outside. And uh, the free rat could open by a simple lever, could learn to open the uh, prison that the first rat was in. And invariably, the free rat in some way empathically picked up the distress of the imprisoned rat and went there and touched the lever and the imprisoned rat was free. Now the researchers made the, the experiment a little bit more complicated. What they did was uh, uh, while uh, the first rat was in prison, was under the glass bowl, they gave the free rat a bar of chocolate, which just as for humans is, uh, seems to be the favorite food of rats. And uh, what would the free rat do? What would we do? Well, the free rats uh, adopted uh, uh, one of two behaviors. Some rats first went and freed their, com their companion, and then they both ate together the chocolate. Uh, 
Some other rats were more cautious, I suppose. They ate half the chocolate, then they went and opened the door and let uh, the rat free, and the rat ate, the, the prison uh, liberated the rat ate the uh, remaining part of the, uh, of the chocolate. Well, you can see how um, uh, had, there has been a lot of uh, talk on empathy lately, and a lot of researches, because the model of the human being that uh, we are moving towards is that uh, we are resonant. I, uh, uh, during the talk on Sudan, I just uh, I happened to uh, look back and uh, I could see your faces as well ex as experience what I was experiencing. I could see uh, in uh, many of you or many of us the concern and the resonance and the participation to what was happening. Now that is not just the thin veneer of civilization, that is an immediate response. We are born to uh, come into resonance with other human beings and that knowledge is changing what we know about human beings. Um, let me tell you one more research. It was just published a few days ago, so I will need to know a bit more about this. But uh, basically, what they have been studying how, why people like to talk about themselves so much. So they put them under fMRI, under magnetic resonance, so they could see brain uh, imaging activity. And basically what they discovered that is that when people, when we talk about ourselves, the same reward systems are activated in the brain as uh, when we have sex or when we get money or when we deal with food. Uh, people were also asked uh, to talk about other people, not about themselves. They were asked to talk about uh, President Obama or President Bush, and uh, after a little while, they uh, went back to talking about themselves because it's such an enjoyable thing to do. <laughs> and uh, uh, you may ask, but why are you talking about this? What does this have to do with kindness? It does, because it has been found that when we talk about ourselves to another person, we end up really liking that person. And um, uh, so the adaptive value of liking to talk about ourselves, of self-disclosure, self is that we bond with other people. So again, we see the relational nature of uh, what we are, that we are embedded into relationships. I can see it in all my clients when I work in psychotherapy that we are made of relationships and uh, there's no way out of that. If the relationships are polluted, we are polluted. If the relationships are good and warm and happy, we will be uh, warm and happy. And um, now this is the first resource that I wanted to tell you about. Let me go on to the second resource and then I'll try to connect them. But I'll, I think at some point you are going to see the uh, connection quite clearly. And uh, the second uh, resource is beauty. And by that I mean the capacity to appreciate beauty. But let me start with a, a story here too. Again, we start with God. God, this is also a Middle Eastern story. God noticed that uh, uh, in the beginning of time that uh, people were getting bored. So he said, uh, well, I'm going to send them beauty so they will have a good time. But if I send them beauty, I, ha I have also to send them ugliness. And the beauty and ugliness happened to be two women. Beauty was dressed... Uh, uh, was obviously beautiful and was dressed in a wonderful uh, piece of clothing. And uh, ugliness 
uh, was not very pleasant, obviously, and uh, she was uh, clothed with uh, stinking rags. So beauty and uh, ugliness um, start walking and they had to go to humanity and it's a long way from God to humanity so they walk and walk and walk for days and um, at some point they're hot and they're tired and uh, they pass by a lake and uh, ugliness has some plan in her head and she says there's a lake there why don't we go and have a nice swim together and the beauty says great idea so they both undress and uh, they plunge in the lake and beauty is a very good swimmer so she starts uh, swimming and goes far away and as soon as beauty is, has been swimming far away uh, ugliness comes out of the water and steal her clothes her clothing so um, ugliness puts on the beautiful clothing and then she goes off to humanity and uh, beauty when she comes back to the shore finds only the rags and uh, so she's obliged to wear the rags and uh, this is how beauty and ugliness came to uh, humanity and this is why one of the reasons why we are so mixed up because uh, uh, sometimes it's very easy to know that something is beautiful. But sometimes it takes a bit more work. And what, what seems to be beautiful is not so beautiful after all. And what uh, exactly reveals an inner beauty. And also beautiful is all, um, often attached to uh, a sense of um, possessiveness, to uh, territoriality, to aggressiveness, and so on and so on. So, some uh, years ago, I did uh, uh, a uh, small research on my own and just went around and asked not just my clients, I had been working for a long time on this uh, in my practice, but I asked all kinds of people, what happens to you when you have an experience of beauty? That is, when uh, you are in nature, when you see the a starry sky, when you hear a piece of music, when you read a poem, when you see a movie that you like, when you see a face, a body uh, that uh, you enjoy, when you are able to see uh, inner beauty in the inside of a person, or any other kind of experience that you may have had. Um, and uh, it was very interesting, not w uh, only what people uh, said about that, but the way they said it, the moment people started to uh, recall an experience of beauty, um, they changed. They started breathing in a different way, their voices became lower, their eyes, uh, their eyes sparkled, uh, their whole body posture changed. Their organism changed. Beauty is a fact of uh, the organism. So many times we think of beauty as just uh, some, um, you know, um, going and buying a, an antique uh, uh, piece of furniture or things like that. But it's such a much wider experience. We could say and I think I'm going to point to that in a moment, we could say it's a biological experience, that we are uh, uh, programmed to uh, detect beauty. In fact, uh, just as a beginning, I can tell you the, uh, the uh, book by Professor Eric Kandel, one of the founding founders, uh, uh, starting founders of neuroscience, the new book came out, it's called The Age of Insight. And in it, he uh, asked the, a very interesting question of why are we so interested in art? Uh, why is art so valuable to us? Why do we like uh, paintings? He uh, talks especially about paintings. His uh, response is that uh, art is so important to us because it enables 
uh, us to uh, understand other people, to go into the minds of other people. It is an access to other people's inner universe. And therefore, it's, uh, it enables us to relate to others. And therefore, it has a high adaptive value. But uh, apart from uh, uh, my own uh, uh, research, I, wa I want to uh, tell you about some uh, much uh, greater work that has been done. For instance, in uh, Norway, there has been, uh, I think it was published in 2006, a study on uh, 50,000 people. And uh, um, these people were, were asked about their cultural activities. That is, how often do you go to a uh, concert, to an exhibition? How often do you engage in creative art activity? How often do you get in touch with the beauty or do you read a book, a book that you enjoy? And uh, the more the people were engaged in cultural uh, activities, the more they were protected from anxiety and depression, the more their physical health was in a good shape, and uh, the more their life, the general life satisfaction was high. Uh, not a bad result, I would say. I'll tell you another example, and I think we are getting closer to understanding why beauty can make us kinder. There was a 12-year uh, research on art students. This was a longitudinal study. It started when the students were 14, and it ended when they were, were 26. And uh, some, some of the students uh, studied art. They were in art-rich curriculums and some of them were in uh, art poor curriculum. The idea was to find their differences, both in academic achievement and uh, in many other uh, behavior traits. And uh, what uh, came out was that uh, not only the um, art, the um, academic achievement of people that had, uh, had a lot of art training was uh, high, higher than the rest. Also in subjects that had nothing to do with, or apparently nothing to do with art, such as uh, mathematics. But also these uh, people, long after their art training had finished, these uh, uh, 26 years old uh, were more engaged in volunteer behavior. They were more engaged in uh, service and community activity, uh, they were more ready to uh, um, be able to help a friend, and uh, uh, they were also voting more. So they were more engaged uh, in uh, uh, society. So uh, I think we're probably starting to see why uh, beauty and uh, art can make us kinder. Let me take uh, a different kind of uh, beauty, the beauty of nature. Still beauty it is though. And uh, I'll just tell you about the research that uh, on uh, hospitals, when uh, people after a, um, a major surgery could look out of the window and just see a brick wall or uh, they could look out at the window and they could see a tree. That made uh, a big difference in time of recovery, in how much uh, analgesic they used and how many times they had to call the nurse to get some help. In other words, uh, just having a, a, a tree out of the window will make you go home after surgery sooner. That means, of course, uh, a less expense. Multiply that for all hospitals. Less expense for the hospitals, even if you um, account for the trees. 
And even simpler, the same experiment was repeated with the pictures, just putting a simple picture of a landscape at the feet of a bed without saying anything. This was a double-blind experiment. The doctors didn't know anything. The nurses didn't know anything. The patients didn't know anything. They just found this picture at the foot of the bed, and the picture was a nice uh, landscape. Again, quicker recovery. Again, less analgesics. Again, less calling for a nurse. And uh, the same can be said about uh, trees and about park, that they have uh, a restorative effect that people that uh, live near parks uh, have less crime and uh, they're also less uh, scared of crime. And uh, children uh, who are more in con contact with the vitamin G, G for green, um, function much better in uh, schools. Well, that was just a uh, a few examples of uh, how exposure to beauty can change deeply the way we are, the way we feel, the way we relate with others, and also not only make us better in academic matters, but also uh, make us more ethical and more uh, open to others. I just wanted to uh, finish, I think I did pretty well with time. Um, I just wanted to finish with uh, the, uh, I was glad the, the uh, box, Pandora's box was mentioned this morning. As you know, all, when Pandora opened that box, all kinds of ills and uh, catastrophes came out of the box. But. Uh, not everybody knows the whole myth, because the whole myth says that uh, after everything had come out of the box, there was still one little being at the bottom of the box, and it was quite uh, not particularly in a good shape because all the other stuff had been sitting over it. But uh, in the end, this little being came up of the box and jumped out of the box, and you know what that being was? It was hope, it was hope. So that's what I leave you with, a little bit of hope and a wish to encounter beauty and the kindness in your life. Thank you very much.